All right, our next biological macromolecule that we're going to talk about is the lipids. Um, lipids uh, oftentimes get a bad rap. Uh, you probably have negative connotations or maybe positive when you see these fries uh, being fried in oil there. Um, but they're very, very important, uh, particularly in the cell membrane. We're going to talk a lot about that in this course because that is the thing that separates the cell from outside the cell. So it's a real important barrier. We're going to talk about uh, some major types of lipids. Um, and we'll talk about the roles of fats in energy storage. We'll talk about oils a little bit as well. Um, and then talk about this difference between what we call saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. We will show you the chemistry that leads to that. Then we need to talk about a very special type of lipid, the phospholipids and their role in the cell membrane. We'll talk a little bit about how lipids can be involved as steroids um, and function as hormones, which are just signaling molecules. Um, and then talk a little bit about this thing called cholesterol and its importance in the uh, plasma membrane as well. All right, so lipids are uh, primarily what we call nonpolar, remember, um, and these, that makes them hydrophobic. They don't mix with water. So here's some water with a layer of oil on top of it, um, and that is because they, they don't mix because the oil is hydrophobic. Now that's because of their chemical properties, um, and lipids are primarily made of carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds. Um, there's not really any other atoms in there. Um, a couple of oxygens maybe, but not a lot. But all of these bonds that we will see are going to make them really good for storage of energy. So there is a difference between fats and oils. It has to do with their um, kind of uh, properties at room temperature. We'll come back to that. And then um, we need to talk about phospholipids and their role in the cell membrane. We'll also touch a little bit on some like kind of uh, accessory or structural um, lipids like waxes and oils, which can be a very protective barrier like on the otter's uh, fur here, right? It probably has an oily layer that helps it be water resistant. Um, so uh, we can talk about that as well. But let's get into the structure here first. So most lipids um, come in the form of what we call a triglyceride. Okay, tri being three, and glycer uh, is uh, because there is a glycerol molecule in there. So glycerol is a three carbon molecule with these OHs on it. And this glycerol molecule is kind of gonna form the backbone of our triglyceride. Now, uh, lipids aren't technically polymers. This is the one macromolecule that kind of breaks the, the rule, but they kind of are in another way. Um, so we have this glycerol and attached to each of these carbons will be what we call a fatty acid tail. That's where the difference comes in. There can be different fatty acids tails. They can vary in length and structure. Um, and I'll show you some of those uh, differences here in a moment uh, with those tails. But Let's talk about why this chemical structure is important. So we take three of these fatty acid tails, stick them onto the glycerol. Look at how many bonds are in here, right? That's a lot of bonds, okay? And remember, each bond is stored energy. So the more bonds we have, the more stored energy we have. That means that lipids, uh, like triglycerides here, um, they're going to store way more energy than something like our carbohydrates. Um, so we're talking 9,000 calories, which is we, so when we talk about food, the unit calorie, like on a food package is actually a kilo, kilo calorie, um, thousand calorie. So nine calories per gram, technically kilocalories, um, versus 4.3 kilocals per gram for carbohydrates. So that's about double, right? Um, per unit weight, you get double the energy from a lipid. Now that might sound great. Um, and there are some people that eat high fat diets because of that. There are some drawbacks to that. Um, 
oftentimes in energy availability, um, it takes a little bit more work to access the energy that's stored in here versus something like glucose where you can access it really, really quickly. So there's, there's pros and cons to this, but it does mean that uh, lipids are great for storing energy. So if you're like me and you tend to store a lot of energy um, in your body, you have fat cells, right? Um, that That is energy storage there, right? Um, and I like to say that's for when I get lost in the woods. I'll be able to survive um, where all those skinny people won't be able to survive. They won't have any stored energy, right? That's what I tell myself at least. So each of these fatty acid tails is storing energy and they can be used um, as energy there. Now the tails can vary primarily in their length, but also their kind of structure. So this is where we get into this term saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids. So you probably heard of saturated fats, unsaturated fats. Um, what does that mean for us? Well, I'm not gonna talk about the health implications. You can take nutrition for that. They'll have better research than I do, but I'm gonna tell you what that means chemically. It has to do with what type of bonds are happening between the carbons in the fatty acid tails. So let's look at a saturated fat here. It is all single bonds between the carbons, and that means every carbon has the maximum number of hydrogens on it that it can take. Okay, That could be uh, two or three in the case of the end one. So this molecule here is saturated with hydrogen. It cannot have any more hydrogens possible on here. An unsaturated fat has a double bond between the two carbons. Now remember a double bond was formed when they share two electrons with each other. So here there could have been hydrogens but instead they double bonded together so it is not saturated with hydrogens. Okay what does that mean? Well let's look at the structure here you can see that there is now a kink, a bend in the molecule. That's changing its shape. That's gonna give it different properties. The difference between these is that saturated fats are going to be solid at room temperature. That's like butter and things like that. Um, they'll be solids at room temperature. Whereas unsaturated fats, because of that kink in the molecule, uh, are liquid at room temperature. We generally call these oils. We tend to find oils a lot of times in plants. Um, seeds tend to be good places for storage of oils. That's like a food reserve there. Animals tend to not store a lot of energy as oils. We do make oils like on our skin and stuff like that, but we tend to store our energy as solid fats. That's because we move around at a faster pace than uh, plants, I think evolutionarily. Having your storage as a solid rather than a sloshy liquid tends to work out a little bit better for us. It also provides better insulation and protection from those saber-toothed tiger teeth or things like that. So um, there's a lot of benefits to having our saturated fats in us um, to store our energy and protect us. Okay. So that's one thing you've probably heard of in the context of health. Here's another one. Trans fats. You've probably heard of the evil trans fats, although maybe some of you are young enough that you uh, didn't experience this trans fat craze that happened in the early 2000s. And then they went on to, in some places, ban trans fats. Um, so uh, again, remember we talked about in our chemistry chapter, we have all these words to describe shapes um, and Two of those terms were cis and trans. Cis had to do with uh, the boat formation and trans had to do with the opposite chair formation, right? So cis is on, when the things are on the same side, trans is on the opposite side. Okay, so in our unsaturated fats, there's two possibilities. We could have the two hydrogens on the same side of the molecule, or we could have the uh, two hydrogens on opposite sides. If they're on the same side, we call this a cis unsaturated fat. This is cis oleic acid. If they are on opposite sides, they are trans fats, trans oleic acid here. Trans fats are actually not super common in nature. Um, 
they can be made artificially and they weren't made to be evil. Some corporation wasn't like, yes, let's make the trans fats because they'll kill people or something like that. What it actually was done was it was realized that trans fats are much like the saturated fats. They're solid at room temperature. If you have to ship food stuff, liquids are really hard to move around. So they're like, well, uh, we can turn them into trans and they will move much easier. Um, so they were kind of made to solidify oils uh, for various reasons. Um, there is some research that indicates that trans fats might have um, negative impacts on cholesterol levels in your blood and could lead potentially to plaque formation and arteries and things like that. Um, so there was a lot of pushback against the use of trans fats. Um, I don't, I don't have a broad uh, depth of knowledge on the actual uh, scientific research on that, but um, they got a lot of negative publicity and sometimes publicity is all that it takes for them to get a bad rap, right? Um, so that is the chemistry behind cis versus trans fats there and their properties. All right, um, there are some other fatty acids you may have heard of, things like omega fatty acids. There's a whole industry now of supplements that will try to sell you these. Um, these are what we call essential fatty acids. In nutrition, whenever you see something that says essential, that generally means you can't make it. You have to eat it and get it from somewhere else. So there are essential amino acids. These are amino acids we can't synthesize. We have to eat them. Um, some of the omega fatty acids are uh, produced by um, sea organisms, shrimp, fish, krill, things like that. Um, so there are pills now that you can take that will sell you these omega um, fatty acids. Uh, their health benefits are uh, probably overblown if the supplement industry is trying to sell you it. They're definitely going to want to try and like up the the what they think is the benefit because um, they're selling you something, right? But there is some benefit to eating a very diet and making sure you get some of these omega fatty acids. There is some uh, marketing uh, speak where um, not all omega fatty, omega fatty acids are the same. Um, so uh, there's not a lot of regulation on this stuff right now. Um, and it's a little bit complicated because there's a lot of different ones and their health benefits are all slightly different there. Along with this, there's also some uh, lipids that are involved in um, like waxes and things like that. Many plants will often have waxy coatings. Uh, this is primarily for waterproofing. You might think, why would plants want to be waterproof? Well, two reasons. Um, actually, too much water can be bad for plants, right? That can lead to pathogen growth, um, fungi, and things like that. Um, but also preventing water from escaping from the plant, right? If you have wax on the outside, it keeps your water in and keeps it from evaporating. Plants need lots of water to do the photosynthesis reaction. So they don't want to lose that water just through transpiration out, uh, out of their cells. So waterproofing is very, very important. Um, all right, so those are uh, some of the fatty acids and some of their uses. Let's talk about a real special type of lipid though. This is the phospholipid. So this is different from a triglyceride. Here we have a big old phosphate group. You can see the phosphate here attached to the glycerol here and then only two fatty acid tails. Okay, this is gonna give it some very unique and interesting properties. The two fatty acid tails here are hydrocarbons. They are nonpolar. They're hydrophobic. They don't like water, right? The phosphate group, on the other hand, though, that is polar and it is hydrophilic, water loving. So this molecule, this phospholipid, has one part that likes water and one part that doesn't like water. That's going to do some interesting things when we throw a bunch of these into water. We call this property here of being hydrophilic on one side and hydrophobic on the other side, we call that being amphipathic, okay? Um, it's hydrophobic on one side and hydrophilic on the other. So we got a water-loving head and water-fearing tail. So let's take a bunch of these phospholipids and throw them into a bunch of water and what's gonna happen? Something really cool and really important 
for life. The hydrophilic heads are going to point outwards towards the water. And the little tails that are hydrophobic, they're all going to huddle together inside away from the water. That's going to lead to what we call a phospholipid bilayer. There's really nothing attaching these two things, uh, the top and the bottom, except for these bits don't like water, they're hiding away from it, and these bits do like water, there's water on either side, they're pointing towards it. Scarily, this is actually how your cells are held together. This phospholipid bilayer makes the membrane of your cells. So that bilayer, it's only held together by the fear of water, basically. So if we look at a diagram of this, here we have the, let's say the outside of the cell up here. Here's the outer layer of the phospholipid bilayer. Here's the inside of the cell, and we have the inner layer of it, and the tails are hiding away from the water that's on either side. Now you'll notice that in this bilayer here, there's lots of different things kind of studded through and impregnated into it. We have lots of proteins like these channel proteins. We might have receptors that are on the outside. They might have things like glycoproteins. There's that glyco term. Glycoproteins are part sugar, part protein. Glycolipids, part sugar, part lipid. Um, these are often found on the outside of cells and things like that. So we're going to come back to phospholipids and spend a whole lot of time on them in chapter five. Okay, um, so this uh, this phospholipid bilayer is super super important because if it breaks, right, what happens to your cell? Well, your cell bursts then, and all the cell stuff goes floating away, right? So this phospholipid bilayer is going to form our cell membrane, which is going to separate the outside world from inside your cell. And then you're going to need to move things across this as well. Okay, you might see one important molecule in here that you probably think is bad because, again, it gets a bad rap because too much of it in your diet can be bad for you, but you do need it. It's cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually a lipid as well. I'll show you a structure of it in just a moment. Uh, cholesterol is uh, an integral part of your membrane. It gives your membrane some flexibility. We don't want our membrane to be too rigid, right? Because if it's rigid, it might crack and then your cell bursts. So we want it to be flexible and cholesterol helps give it some flexibility in there. Cholesterol is actually part of a group of molecules called steroids. Um, you probably think of steroids and you think anabolic steroids, right? If you're a bodybuilder or competitive cyclist that's doping, you might be doing steroids, right? To build bigger muscles, things like that. But steroids are just uh, a type of molecule. Most of them have this ring-like structure. And that, as we talked about previously, gives them uh, unique functions. Some of them are hormones, Hormones are signaling molecules, and in animals, the steroid uh, hormones tend to signal things like developmental changes, um, so testosterone and estradiol. They're technically, I don't believe, is any one hormone called estrogen, although we use that term. Um, there are many different estrogens. One is estradiol. Um, cholesterol is also a hormone. Uh, it can be a signaling molecule as well as um, that structural component of the cell membrane. Here's cortisol, uh, which is a, uh, a hormone as well that causes uh, different reactions in the body. Um, and that has that ring-like structure as well. So we're not going to talk too much about these. Um, uh, you will talk about hormones a lot if you take like a human development class later or if you take um, something like uh, anatomy and physiology um, so there they will talk all about hormones. I want to make a side note, and I'll, I'll cover this again later, but um, there are hormones in other organisms as well. Plants have hormones. Most plant hormones aren't actually steroids. Uh, there are many different uh, signaling molecules in um, plants. We call them hormones, but they're very chemically different from the hormones in humans. So 
Uh, if you ate plant hormones, they wouldn't do anything to you because you're not a plant. You don't have the receptors, so you wouldn't start growing leaves or anything like that, um, or you wouldn't uh, start making flowers. So uh, just a side note, I'll come back to that when we talk about cell signaling later in the course. All right, let's do some review here. Okay, here I have a fatty acid. This fatty acid contains only carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. That would mean it is known as, go ahead and pause the video, think about this one. All right, hopefully you went with D. This is a saturated fatty acid because it is full of hydrogen. There's no double bonds in here. It is a saturated fatty acid. Okay, let's do another one here. The head of a phospholipid, which faces towards the water, is blank. So just to remind you, here's the head of this molecule. Go ahead and pause the video and think about this one. All right, the head of a phospholipid would be a hydrophilic water loving it will point towards the water the tails down here those are hydrophobic okay so that's our section on lipids like i said we're going to come back to phospholipids they're going to be really important when we talk about membranes in chapter five most lipids are non-polar hydrophobic compounds because they're hydrocarbons um, these include fats oils we got waxes that special group of phospholipids which is amphipathic and the steroids um, because of all the carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen bonds they store energy very very well twice as well as carbohydrates per gram um, we talked about triglycerides that's a glycerol backbone with three fatty acid tails, three fatty acid tails on it. Um, the fatty acid tails can vary. Um, if they are saturated fatty acids, they only have single bonds um, between the carbons. Unsaturated fatty acids contain at least one carbon-carbon double bond that can add a kink to the molecule in there. And then phospholipids are both polar and nonpolar. And when we get a bunch of them together in water, they'll self arrange themselves into a lipid bilayer, which can form a membrane. All right, that is it for our discussion of lipids.